The top 10 NBA players not named 2021 All-Stars. Only 24 positions and way more players deserving of being named to the team leave NBA fans arguing like this. That don't make any sense. Listen, Ain't nobody really in it. Why you took like you that? the distance one-on-one? -on -one. That's you exactly, you look like you were tired hey, of it. From OKC's Shea Gilgis Alexander to Toronto's Fred Van Vliet, this video displays how deep the modern NBA's pool of talent really is by counting down the biggest all-star snubs this season. Number 10, Tobias Harris. Back with the Clippers in the 2018-19 season, Harris established a reputation as one of the most efficient and versatile stretch fours across the NBA. In LA that season, Toby averaged career highs in points, field goal percentage, and rebounds, and now two years later in Philly, he's having another breakout season, and it's under the same coach in Doc Rivers. Helping the Sixers to the best record in the Eastern Conference, Harris has been the perfect outlet on the perimeter, spacing the floor for Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons. By shooting over 51% from the field on over 15 shot attempts, Tobias has been Philadelphia's second leading scorer, putting up over 20 points per game. Number 9, DeMar DeRozan. To say the San Antonio Spurs get zero recognition would be an understatement, and because of that, you probably didn't know, they currently are the number 6 seed in the Deep Western Conference. After spending half a dozen years as one of the league's premier traditional shooting guards, the league's small ball evolution has transformed DeRozan into an untraditional power forward over the last couple years, and he's been manipulating defenses at that position. The now 31-year-old DeMar is taking three-pointers again and is averaging just under 20 points, seven dimes, and five boards per game, shooting the ball more efficiently than ever. The four-time All-Star and two-time All-NBA player Debo is posting career highs in both free throw percentage and assists and has led the Spurs to a surprisingly impressive first half of the season. Number eight, De'Aaron Fox. One of the fastest players in basketball known for his slashing has added a steady three-point shot this season. In his fourth pro campaign, De'Aaron Fox is attempting a career most by far 5.3 attempts from deep and knocking down a career best 35% of those shots. But despite De'Aaron posting numbers of over 22 points and 7 assists, the Kings have lost 8 in a row. And maybe if they hadn't been losing so much recently and Fox had a better supporting cast around him, then he'd be in the debate for a spot on the team. But regardless, we all know that Sacktown's point guard is all-star caliber. Number 7, Bam Adebayo. After Miami fell 7 games below 500 at one point, any chance of either Jimmy or Bam getting all-star recognition went out the window. But things are now turning around in South Beach, as the Heat have had 2 win streaks of 3 games since their brutal 7-14 start, and they're currently on a 4 game win streak. But with Butler missing 12 of Miami's first 18 games, it was the franchise's 23-year-old athletic phenom at center Bam Adebayo putting the team on his back. But Bam's been even better since Jimmy returned at the end of January, as since that time, Bam Bam's posting averages of nearly 21 points, 9 rebounds, and 9 assists per game, and he's also posted 4 triple-doubles. On the year overall, which is Bam's fourth as a pro, he's improved his dominance in the paint, as the 6'9 center is averaging 81.3% in the restricted area, and he has a higher assist rate than any big man besides Nikola Jokic, and continues to be an extremely versatile defender on the other end, a shot-blocking menace. Number 6, Jimmy Butler. Bam's teammate in Miami hasn't been himself this season, struggling to stay healthy, and has barely been a threat from behind the three-point line. But if you know anything about basketball, you know that Jimmy Bucket shows up when his team needs him most, so even though he's shooting a shockingly bad 16% from three-point range while attempting only one three-pointer per game, Butler's impact on both ends of the floor can't be fully measured by statistics. He's as tough as nails both mentally and physically, he can create shots off the bounce seamlessly, not to mention, he's still one of the strongest, smartest, and most laterally quick perimeter defenders in the game. Bottom line is, you can't forget, this is the guy who carried Miami to the finals last year by bailing them out with clutch shots. Number 5, Chris Middleton. Larry Bird, Dirk Nowitzki, Kevin Durant, and Steph Curry are the only four players in NBA history to have shooting percentages of at least 50% from the field, 40% from three, and 90% from the free throw line, while averaging over 20 points per game. And the Bucks sharpshooter Chris Cash Money Middleton is on pace to join them after this regular season. A lot of volume scores like Chris are very one-dimensional, but he's elite in almost every aspect of the game, 
putting up a career-best 5.7 assists, as well as 6 rebounds on the best board-getting team in basketball. But what makes Chris a massive snub is the fact that he's a sensational two-way player. Offensively, you'd be hard-pressed to find a star named over him that puts up better numbers on more efficient shooting. On the other end, he's tasked with guarding the opposing team's best player every game, and considering he's been a big part of the third seed out east all year, Middleton's debatably the biggest snub on this list. Number 4, DeMontis Sabonis. The Indiana Pacers' rising power forward DeMontis Sabonis is the first player in NBA history to average 20-10-5 and, and not make the All-Star team, significantly vamping Indiana's offensive flow. Sabonis is ahead of Nikola Jokic and Ben Simmons in passes made per game. We knew this man was a beastly interior presence coming into 2021, but most notably about DeMontis this year is the fact that he's added a three-point shot to his offensive repertoire. He's taking just under three shots from distance per game and knocking down a pretty decent 35% of them. You could argue Dom should be ranked higher, but he's not the greatest interior defender. He struggles on defense generally, but other than that, Indiana's power forward is elite in every other area. Number 3, Fred Van Vliet. The NBA champion Steady Freddy is not only having the best season of his career offensively, but he's maintaining a reputation as one of the peskiest perimeter defenders in the league. Van Vliet's anticipation, hustle, and general IQ on this end allow him to rotate from seemingly out of nowhere and help defense scenarios to make sensational plays on the most elite of players. But whether he's guarding someone bigger than him in the post, in the pick and roll, or in ISO sets, Van Vliet has the willingness and elite ability to lock down any player at any time. Fred's currently fourth out of all NBA players in steals per game, but offensively is where the undrafted sensation separated himself as a legit legitimate all-star candidate in 2021. Van Vliet has exceptional shooting mechanics, which allows him to maintain balance even when taking jumpers off the dribble from nearly the logo. For the Raptors this year, he's taking just under 9 threes each night and hitting a very respectable 38% of them, so it's safe to say that the future of Toronto's point guard position is in great hands with Fred Van Vliet. Number 2, Trey Young. Ice Trey's devastating combination of elite deep range sniping and Hall of Fame like passing ability make him an undoubtable top three player on this list. In the midst of a breakout campaign, Trey Young was selected as a starter for the 2020 NBA All Star game, and he was quite busy during All Star weekend last year participating in the Rising Stars Challenge, the three point contest, and then he put up a double double in Sunday's main event. But this year, for the first time in his young career, no pun intended, Trey won't be headed to All-Star Weekend, given he's averaging 27 points and 10 assists on a very respectable shooting line of 43, 37, and 88. It's pretty damn insane that the former Oklahoma Sooner isn't making his second All-Star appearance. And considering Atlanta's competing for the playoffs for the first time in a while, while Trey's doing this, that also makes him an All-Star snub. But while Young's one-on-one -on -one game plus flashy passing and shooting, you could argue are significantly better than any player on this list, he gives up a bit too much defensively to be ranked any higher than number two. Before number one, honorable mention to Jeremy Grant, who's currently the favorite for the most improved player of the year, and was highly considered for this list, I had him on it at one point, but I'm going to give respect for Detroit's breakout player in another video. Number one, Shea Gilgis Alexander. The day after being snubbed from the All-Star team, third-year shot creator Shea Gilgis-Alexander had a chip on his shoulder and posted 42 points against the San Antonio Spurs, the first time in his career that he reached the 40-point mark. But on both ends of the floor, the 22-year-old's impact is undeniably better than anyone on this list. Putting the Thunder's seating aside, SGA's importance to the Thunder is equally, if not more important than Donovan Mitchell of the Utah Jazz. Not saying Donovan didn't deserve a spot, but looking at a direct comparison, Mitchell scores 1.7 points more, but he takes 4.1 extra shots to that of SGA. Also, Utah has a significantly better roster than OKC, of course, meaning Mitchell gets easier shots given players like Gobert, Conley, Boyan Bogdanovich, and Jordan Clarkson open up the court for him. More notably, SGA averages more dimes, boards, and steals than D-Mitch, yet it's the shooting efficiency that offers the best argument. Even when bringing in Phoenix's Chris Paul into the equation, other than free throw percentage and three-point attempt rate, 
Gildress Alexander tops CP3 and Spida in every other category. Again, not saying that CP3 and Donovan don't deserve spots in the All-Star game, but on the other end, at 6'6 with a 7-foot wingspan, Shea's lateral quickness plus IQ matches his physical gifts, and to become a top-notch defender, he only needs to add some muscle, but he's already a pretty damn good defender. But overall, how Shea's annually improved his stats and overall maturity throughout his three career seasons make you question just how special of a talent that the Oklahoma City Thunder possess. So SGA's the best player not in the All-Star game, but that's just my take. Now I want to know your thoughts down below. Who's the best non-All-Star? Who's the biggest snub? You're the best for sticking around. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.